All right, so I think we're on and hello, good day, and welcome back to my channel, The Daily Medicine. So, sa episode nito, we're going to react to this uh, prayer rally of the Dutertes or his uh, party mates, the so-called opposition party in the Philippines, opposition to the Marcos Romualdez regime. All right, kasi uh, I almost forgot uh, anniversary pala ng uh, martial law sa Pilipinas this Feb. So I exactly don't know the date, but I think uh, this um, Feb 25th is when the Marcos is, if I'm not mistaken, 25th or 26th, na kung saan they fled the country in 1986. Kasi uh, a few days prior to that, like one to two days, dumating dito yung tinatawag na troubleshooter ni uh, former President Ronald Reagan, kasi siya yung president in the United States at the time, kasi ang USA, the Americans, were uh, our masters, all right, so to speak, during the time of Marcos. Kasi nga, um, if we're going to believe uh, what the CIA personnel and uh, the books would say, all right, kasi may isang CIA uh, operative na naka-destino sa Pilipinas during the time, at sinasabi niya that Marcos was a puppet. I'm speaking of the senior. Marcos Sr. was a puppet of the Americans. So he basically went to Nixon and to CIA to ask for their blessings para he uh, execute yung martial law in order to extend his term. Because at that time, uh, every four-year election, uh, we were like the U.S. We were patterned with, or we patterned our electoral system with that of the United States in the past. Because the um, election system ng United States, although electoral college, uh, every four years, at uh, the president can have another term after the expire yung term niya. Because sa mga nakakalam, ang kanyang vice president at that time was a Lopez, Fernando Lopez, all right? Na matalino si Marcos eh. Um, alam niyang wala siyang capacity, hindi siya ganun kayaman. Although maraming nagsasabi na natagpuan daw niya yung Yamashita gold, all right, Taliano gold, sinasabi ng ibang dami mga theories on how, you know, the Marcos has um, achieved or obtained their wealth. Pero pinakalat yan lahat ni Emel de Marcos nung nasa kapangyarihan na sila, nasa rurok na sila ng martial law, all right, na uh, gold daw yung source ng kanyang yaman. But of course, uh, Emel de, isang butangera, uh, she just wanted to justify uh, their family's ill-gotten wealth. And so, uh, pinapakalat niya yung conspiracy theory na Aliana Gold, Yamashita Gold, etc. At yung mga Ilocano, na mga mga nabudol. Usually, may Ilocano yung mga loyalista. And I'm an Ilocano. Right before we get to this speech of uh, uh, former President Digong Duterte, na puro bisaya. Right? So, uh, nasa nang ba ako? So, pinakalat niya na galing daw sa gold, could be Yamashita or probably Taliano Gold. So, dalawa yung theory na yan eh yung uh, source of wealth ng mga Marcoses. Pero, we all know, based on the Panama Papers na galing sa ill-gotten wealth, galing sa uh, ninakaw na yaman. Alright, yung mga yan. At, uh, uh, that's gonna be for another story. So, yeah, si, uh, si Fernando Lopez, ang kanyang vice president, nasa kanilang media, ABS-CBN, nasa kanilang pera. Alright, kasi, parang sa US, di ba, ngayon, uh, na magkakaroon ng presidential elections in November this year. All right, so a lot of people are speculating kung sino nga ba yung pipili in the um, former president, Donald Trump, as his you know, running mate or vice president for the presidential election. And some people say it could be Christian Noem. Right, I'm very familiar with American politics, by the way. Mas, actually, mas familiar pa ako sa American politics kesa sa Philippine politics. And I was once a news writer for one of the biggest conservative newspapers in the United States. I worked there for months. And I covered, you know, this... Uh, investigations against um, former President Trump, his family, the indictments, the special counsel case against him, the case in Georgia, etc. I cover those online. And, uh, you know, that makes me somehow, you know, not really an expert, but familiar with American politics. So, yung pagpili ng vice president is very strategic. And that is what, well, not, not only, you know, former President Marcos Sr. did, pero yun yung ginawa niya. Kasi wala siyang machinery. So, he had to pick a rich guy who owned ABS-CBN at that time, and then nung uh, uh, nagpa-plano siya na-extend yung kanyang term, he had to get rid of the Lopez family kasi nga medyo ayon nila yung plano ni Marcos. And kasi syempre, pag vice president kayo, may balak kang maging president, di ba? Fernando Lopez, you know, probably wanted to be president because busy siya, di ba? Expectedly, kagaya ngayon yung case ni Marcos sa, sa kanyang vice president na si uh, Duterte. Very ambitious si Sarah Duterte. So, sabi nga nila, um, Sarah without H. Ano ba yung H without heart daw? So, uh, yun, um, you need to get rid of that ambitious guy and that's probably what 
Romualdes and Marcuses are doing. You know, I'm pretty objective here. Wala akong pinapanigan sa dalawang kampong to. So I'm trying to give you a historical background of uh, Philippine politics for us to understand the present uh, politic, politics or political scene better and clearer. So, di ba, he got rid of the Lopez family. Um, he, according to to experts, according to witnesses, according to established cases that um, they filed Trump up charges against the Lopez family and then the Lopez family had to flee the Philippines and uh, migrated to the U.S. And then uh, that's when uh, the Marcus regime swooped in, all right? They they sequestered or they seized the wealth of the Lopez family, ABS-CBN. Um, hindi lang yun, mga jaryong pag-ari ng mga ibang mayam at the time. Uh, PAL was also seized like that. May ari ng PAL the time was the Toda family na kung saan, if you read this story from the New York Times, um, sinisingil daw ni, I forget the first name, Mr. Toda, right? He was one of the richest uh, men uh, that time. Sinisingil daw ni Mr. ni Mr. Toda si Mr. Marcos sa mga sa mga junkets or right, mga flights, pal flights ng kanyang asawang si si uh, Imelda Marcos. Uh, dapat daw 6 million dollars yung sisingilin pero dahil nga na, nahiya kasi president eh, uh, dictator si Marcos, uh, ang sinin, sinisingil na lang daw ni Mr. Toda according to that New York Times story was only 3 million just half of what Mrs. Marcos owed that time at syempre si uh, uh, Marcos Sr., uh, being the entitled dictator that he was, uh, akala niya pag-aaral niya lahat, akala niya lahat ng, lahat ng mga bagay-bagay sa Pilipinas, uh, pati siguro mga tao dito, eh, pag-aaral niya, his, everything and everyone was his subject, was was under his control. So, uh, he seized the, uh, these uh, Philippine airlines from the Toda family through threats and intimidation, political intimidation. So, walang nagawa kundi ibigay at uh, ang pal sa isang crony ni Marcos whose name I forgot. So, yun, uh, and magpapivot tayo sa political scene ngayon. So, yung kaso ng Vice President or the rift between the Lopez family na kung saan Vice President si Fernando Lopez uh, kay uh, Marcos Sr. at si uh, si Sara Duterte ang Vice President ngayon kay Marcos Jr. Nakikita niyo yung parang similarities, di ba? And um, there is a rift now, widening rift between um, the former unity team uh, political clans, the Duterte clan and the Marcos clan, at sinaman pa ng Romualdez from Visayan region. Diba? So, yun lang yung nakikita natin na scenario na kung saan, how are they gonna get rid of Sarah Duterte? Because we all know that in fact, in 2022, before the presidential elections, during um, I think 2021, I think, gusto talaga ni uh, Digong Duterte na tumakbo yung anak niyang si Sarah for president. Kaya nga, ayaw niyang endorse si Marcos, medyo skeptical siya. But you know, um, the Dutertes were smart, all right? Sarah Duterte was smart, and, you know, Duterte, Dugong Duterte himself was also smart. So, kasi kung talagang tama si Dugong Duterte, eh, pinatakbo na lang niya na president yung kanyang anak ni si Sarah, di ba? But they all knew that, you know, the Marcuses were politically uh, powerful that time, and that and that was their own time, all right? Kaya nga, si, kung matatandaan natin, di ba? Si Dugong Duterte, he used the Marcus vote to win in 2016. Right? Uh, before he ran for president, that's when he was um, uh, telling the Marcos loyalists and supporters na ipapalibing daw niya sa libingan ng mga bayani. You're going to start with that, of course. Si yung mga labi ni uh, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. If you would like to gain the support of this uh, Marcos loyalists, you're going to definitely start with that. Kasi nga, decades yung away na yan. Dec- naging political club yung, yung pagli- pag- pag- pagpapalibing kay Marcos Sr. for decades. Ever since, you know, the Marcuses were ousted in 1986 at sila sa Hawaii, di ba? So, um, you know, Duterte was pretty smart to come up with that kind of strategy. Although, we all know na, sino pang nag-appoint kay Duterte? Well, in 1986, 1987, I think, ang nag-appoint sa kanya as vice mayor ng Davao City ay, ay si Cory Aquino, di ba? Sino pang nag-appoint sa kanya? Ba't siya galit sa mga Aquino? But, but yung mga alipores niya, yung mga medyo mahina ang utak ng mga Lepores ni Duterte, ay galit na galit sa mga Aquino. I'm neither Marcos uh, supporter, nor Aquino, nor Duterte. Wala akong pinapanigan sa mga PI ng mga political clans or political cults na to. Or ever since, I've I've been, you know, uh, a critic of of um, Aquino, Noynoy Aquino, alright, when he was president. Ang pinakatinututulang ko yung RH Bill, alright? RH Bill na yan. Yung kanyang, yung kanyang NEDA, 
uh, shift na si Arsenio Balisacan na isang leftist, statist, left-leaning economist, alright? Uh, na mali-mali mga pinagsasabi niya tungkol sa overpopulation, uh, ek-ek niyang mga pautot na yan. And uh, when uh, uh, Duterte became president, I was also a very ardent, a strong critic, alright? Um, especially um, sa drug war niya na I predicted that it would fail, alright? It was destined to fail, Duterte was stupid. And that, uh, ang pinaka tinututulang ko that time was his honeymoon with the CPPNP. Ito yung ang daming di alam, right? Kasi nga, yung mga supporters ni Duterte, they have fish brain, right? Napaka-igsi ng kanyang lang mautak, right? If they actually knew their own history, or if they actually knew who they supported, in 2016, dalit na galit ako that time, uh, and I... I was totally before pa yan naging naging in sa mga detertards na yan naging naging uh, yeah in at naging fad sabi na natin uso sa mga Duterte uh, supporters yung pagiging uh, anti CPP NPA ang pagre-red tag all right I was anti CPP NPA ever since when I was in college um I went to this um uh, seminar I think or gathering ng CEGP College Editors Guild of the Philippines na If you're familiar, kung student journalist ka back in college o ngayon, ewan ko na ang status ng CEGP ngayon, ang pinaka-leftist organization ng mga grupo ng mga estudyante, organizations ng mga estudyante sa Pilipinas ay CEGP. Susunod na yung mga LFS. Actually, magkaka-comrades yung mga yan eh. And I joined um, itong CEGP way back in college. Uh, wala akong binayaran kasi nga may utang daw. May, nag-umutang daw ang pamunuan ng CEGP sa, sa aming campus org. I don't know how utang 5,000 or something like that. So, parang pinadala ako kahit ayaw ko as a representative. So, free meal, free lahat yung mga registration, etc. And nung pumunta kami, I think it was Davao City. That was Davao. So, first time in Davao, I was actually starstruck. So, parang isang malait na country ang Davao. Uh, nakita ko naman yung progress sa Davao. And being an Ilocano, nakita ko yung comparison sa uh, Baguio City. Baguio City is definitely developed as well. So, it's comparable to Davao. So, um, kaya wag sabihin ng mga mga alipores ni Duterte na, okay, parang Singapore. Or, have you been to some places in Luzon? For example, Baguio, Clark, etc. So, anyway, so, so first time ko sa Davao City, pumunta ko sa Matina, I think, more grande beach resort yung place. Nakita ko kung gaano ka-leftist ang CAGP. So, yung, pero yung isang event na gabi, na kung saan, uh, na, yung parang performance, uh, tinatawag ko yung uh, per- per- performative art ng grupo ng mga pamunuan ng mga leadership ng CEGP at the time, they were shouting expletives and shouting uh, leftist slogans. And then, that next morning, parang nagkaroon ng uh, emergency uh, meeting bago ko maumuwi. I think that time, uuwi na kami. Na- naalala ko eh. Na sinabi yung mga leaders, uh, yung mga leaders ng mga yung CEGP na sa isang meeting na yun, pumunta kami sa isang room ng beach resort na sinasabi na mayroon daw uh, intel, na infiltrate daw ng intel yung yung uh, CEGP conference na yun. And then, I felt like they were looking at me. What the f- How? Intel ako, nung isudyante ako. ba? Diba? I was like 18, 19 that time. So parang, all eyes were on me. No, parang sinasabi na, ikaw yung intel, ikaw yung intel ng AFP, etc. ba? Diba? Kasi parang paranoid to mga PI na to. So anyone who disagrees with them, they will call you intel. Yung parang red tagging. So, 